sorry guys that I'm not using my typical camcorder on the tripod in where the uh, green screen is located, which is down in the living room. Well, not living room, um, uh, television room. My dad's been working on uh, getting me a new tripod head and uh, fixing, just overall fixing my tripod problem. So for now, I'm just going to improvise and use my normal iPhone to record this stuff. So to sum up the entire Clash Daytona race into one word and one word only, Freight Train. That's it. If this is what we're going to get for Daytona this month, then my expectations couldn't have reached any lower. This is really what we call racing. Freight trains from the start of the fucking race to the checkered flag falling is what you call exciting. The only exciting thing of that happened that race was Jimmy Johnson actually having the nerve to break that single file cringe train and actually go for the fucking lead. Granted, he did fail to go for the lead in a clean manner as he uh, misjudged on Paul Menard and pretty much wrecked roughly 90% of the field, but good props to him for trying to make it less boring, and finally, finally he won a race. Yeah, I know it's not a points race, but it's still a race win nonetheless. Who really cares about the Clash races these days? It's a pretty much a meaningless race nowadays. Daytona 500, the marathon known as the Coca-Cola 600, and the throwback race, as well as the final race of the season, are, is what has prestige to these NASCAR races. Not to mention the Brickyard 400. And who is... And for the All-Star race, say I may have prestige, but is anybody at all really excited for that fecal smear on the schedule now? What? The last objectively great and awesome race was 2010. 2018 was one of the better ones, but it still has problems. Why am I even talking about the All-Star Race? I'm, just, I'm talking about the Daytona. If the same leader in the same lineup on the grid from the start of the green flag waving to the fall of the checkered flag is what's gonna be for is what's gonna be delivered for the Daytona 500. Then I am not anticipated for it whatsoever. In fact, I was glad I was working today rather than watching that fucking horse shit. The only thing that would have saved it from being z a big flat zero was my one of my men winning and of course my main man jimmy johnson wins it so it went from a big fat zero to a 0 0.0000001 percent and if you guys are gonna give me shit just because i don't accept a race for what it is let me put it this way Put two tabs on the computer. Type in 2011 Aaron's 499. Watch that race and compare to the race you just saw. And you tell me what is more exciting. 88 lead changes where people are actually competitive and go for the lead. Irrespective if they're tandem drafting or not. Or single file with the same person leading the same person in second the same person in third same person in fourth same person in fifth yada 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 you get the drift all the way from start to finish unless if someone who actually has the balls of steel to break that single file cringe train 
I do not want you to look at this as a lens of a Kyle Busch fan, a Jimmy Johnson fan, Martin Truex Jr. fan, a fucking um, uh, Kevin Harvick fan, a Joey Logano fan, Brad Keselowski fan, or what have you. I want you to look at this as a racing fan, a genuine, honest racing fan. Do you want to see past? Do you want to enjoy NASCAR? What are the factors in NAS in the Daytona and Talladega races? Do you enjoy? Is it passing for the lead? We had absolutely none of that outside of Jimmy Johnson having the balls of steel to break that cringe train. Close finishes. It was rained out. The big one? Anybody that watches NASCAR only for the wrecks has to be disingenuous about their tastes and standards for sports. And anybody that defends single file racing, the fickle waving of uh, caution flags and races, even though this uh, caution flag was uh, perfectly justified considering that it was raining, but there's plenty of ex exhibitations I have under my sleeves or up in my brain of NASCAR throwing cautions when they didn't need to throw the caution. Example, 2010 Aaron's 499. Well, not, <laughs> not that race. It, the Talladega race in the fall, the one on Halloween in 2010, as well as the uh, 2013 Talladega spring race where it could have been an um, a phenomenal three wide finish but no no the field frozen bullshit was pulled out of nascar's ass thus taking away casey kane's win that race granted yeah he was he was a cup driver supposedly leeching but nascar at the same time just had to unearth that stupidity straight out of their ass I swear, NASCAR these days has its head so far up their ass, they can inhale their own gas before they rip one out. I mean, has NASCAR not figured it out yet? This single-file racing is one of the primary reasons why NASCAR has been dying off of the pe for the last several years. Talladega hardly had any lead changes at all in both races. No one ever had the balls to pass on the last lap in the Talladega spring race. Only way they could if the driver were in first ran out of fuel, like Kurt Busch in the fall race. There barely a damn thing was memorable in the Talladega 2016 fall race, other than the Jack... Other than the jack getting stuck underneath uh, the side, the uh, door side of uh, Joey Logano's car. Anybody that says you're not a true fan if you don't like this race is not a true fan themselves. A true fan would actually man up and criticize what's been poisoning this sport for the last several years. And not put on blinders. It's time we man up, take off our blinders, remove our bias, re reductive bias viewpoint, and start thinking clearly and rationally about what's uh, the real reasons why NASCAR has been rapidly declining the last several years. Hell. Do I have to keep beating the dead horse about Brian France getting caught driving under the influence? That is the big, big coup de grace of why NASCAR is rapidly declining. That would cause a massive financial cr crippling to many teams. And yet NASCAR fans will still... The apologist NASCAR fans will still... Defend it to no end. Sorry, but if you are the head of the wolf, 
to the biggest racing organization in America, then the controversy and negativity is perfectly justified. Anybody that defends this objectively horrendous racing should not be called a racing fan. It's that simple. This is, it's not racing. It takes no skill. It's, it's freight trains from the start of the race to the end of the race. Tr freight training is not racing. It's not racing. It's objectively not racing. Get freight train single, f get this single file trash heap the fuck away from these super speedways so we can actually see some passing and competition and actually objectively exciting racing for once because this was abysmal that clash i shouldn't say clash trash race was horrendous in every way possible the fact that my man jimmy johnson won it does not save us from its fucking abhorrent form of racing did they learn nothing from 2013? Don't even get me started on the 2013 Daytona 500. That was fucking horrendous. The fact that Jimmy won, yet again, does not save it from being arguably one of the worst Daytona 500s I've ever watched in my entire life. I mean, let me put it this way. If you're really going to defend single file racing to no end... If you wanted to go to a NASCAR race, which I'm sure you do, since you always claim to be a dedicated fan, but if you barely lift a finger to try and go to NASCAR races, then it's honest, then your then your credibility as a NASCAR fan is rather questionable at this point. What would you rather see in person? Pack racing, but there's actually passing and competition for the race lead where it would produce and unfold close finishes and other such phenomenal finishes outside of close finishes like I don't know what happened in the 2007 Daytona 500 where there was a flip and a close finish the uh, 2008 Daytona 500 even though that was the that uh, year for NASCAR was rather fucking abysmal but still produced a solid uh 2000 a, t a solid uh finish at the uh 2008 daytona 500 because people were actually able to catch the leader and pass them depressing on tony stewart's bar but still still fun finish nonetheless where people actually were able to have the slingshot power and Zoom by the leader for the lead. Single file cringe train has none of that. None of that whatsoever. Talladega in the spring might produce something new now that there's n no restrictor plates on the super speedways. Talladega and Daytona, but what's there to say that would solve anything? We've preached this for years. Get rid of the splitter. Get rid of the tapered spacers. Get rid of side force. Made the side skirts even. They did the right thing by expanding the height of the spoiler. Keep the height of the spoiler. And then you got a good stock car. There you go. Problem solved. Restrictor plates in tapered spacers are not the answer. Get it through your thick skulls. It is not that hard to comprehend what the message that we are trying to spread out on the internet. We want NASCAR to be great again. We criticize this fecal matter because we want NASCAR to succeed. And if we don't raise awareness, NASCAR will be as good as dead. <sighs> That's all I got for today. Or tonight, rather. Or this morning, since it's now Monday. 3 a.m., pretty much. 
All I gotta say, that entire race was a single file cringe train. And the only interesting thing about it was that Jimmy Johnson did the same old balls to the wall style of racing to try and make that race less boring. He tried to break the single file cringe train, thus making it suck less. It was a bad judgment call on his part, but hey, it was raining. He had no other choice, so it's kind of justified that he went kind of rogue there. If you're a fan of, say, Austin Dillon, who blatantly dumped Eric Almarola in the back straightaway last year, or Kyle Busch, who pretty much dumps, just, I don't know, insert any time he dumped anybody for the lead in whatever year, whatever race, since there's always at least one year, there's always at least one or two times a year he dumps someone for the lead. It's too many to name at this point, so I'm not going to drag this video on any further. And if you're as well as a fan of Joey Logano, who, might I add, dumped Ken Kenseth for the win at the 2015 Kansas race in the playoffs, then you make sure you want to look in the mirror before you call, call the kettle black. It was a bad judgment call on Jimmy Johnson, but it wasn't like he was blatantly hooking the rear bumper and turning his wheels just so he can make sure that they cra the leader crashes. He tried to do the side draft and failed. It was a normal racing mistake. Normal balls-to-the-wall racing mistake. So, sorry for, for the drag onto this video. Sorry for uh, rambling on. I just needed to get this out there. It, of my gripes with the plate racing, the single file cringe train, yes, yeah, all that stuff. Now you guys know not to call me a biased Jimmy Johnson fan because that was arguably one of the worst Daytona races I have ever watched in my entire fucking life. It went from a flat zero to a zero point zero 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 one percent. Space the fuck out and fuck all this shit.